But I was always puzzled with the fact that I had worked with large organizations and what we were doing to find innovation started translating into uh, this new role out of procurement called strategic sourcing. And strategic sourcing is really there to be more strategic with the business and understanding the supplier needs and supplier fit and extracting the most value of your suppliers uh, while you keep the, the organization out of you know, uh, trouble. Um, and you're maximizing the dollar value. But, and so I started doing that for large companies where they loved their process so much that they asked us if we could come in and help uh, improve strategic sourcing or bring more value of strategic sourcing with the business. So that was my first taste of what procurement was. And then that consulting business became a full service procurement and strategic sourcing service to uh, those companies that were raising a lot of capital and were building procurement for the first time. And when you have a clean slate, it's kind of fun because you know the operational and financial value of good procurement, but, but often procurement is not necessarily set up in the right way. And when it's not, it's terrible. It can be, you know, adding an enormous amount of friction and, and, and the process and, and, you know, it's very difficult for procurement to be successful. The business doesn't see value and there's a bunch of problems with it. And I want to understand why there was so much problem with procurement. Why was it such a function that was not leveraged by the business? Because if procurement was successful and was good, it's, it's so incredibly efficient. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I wanted to solve. And when I started building these procurement functions and educating CFOs and CEOs of these hyper growth companies of the value, because they usually don't think about procurement. They think about supply chain, finance, but procurement sort of like, oh, we hire the smart people, they know the supplier. Meanwhile, like, you know, very, very quickly, you end up in trouble or having a lot of disparate data, decisions, a lot of duplication of effort, a lot of lost opportunity, a lot of cash bleeding for no reason, because either people are not educating and negotiating or they didn't do enough diligence or they hired the supplier because they, they know the guy. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you run into some pretty big problems and then suddenly you want to bring procurement in either because the board's asking for it or there's this situation from the compliance perspective and then you're, you're, then it's really hard because bringing procurement later and then finding good procurement is also hard, but if you get bad procurement too late, like there's just, it's just not a win, win. like the, the person who's coming in to build a function, it's really a big challenge. You need to, to find a superhero to do it because you've got to go back and change people, the way mm -hmm. people do things and expectations. It's like dating for the first time. If your husband tells you all these things or your wife, you listen it all and you remember it. But if six months later they say, well, you know, something completely new or a year later, 10 years later, you're like, what? Um, so you listen <laughs> at the beginning. And I find when you start in a company and if this is a process, if you work for us, these are the processes. This is how you have to go about doing certain things. This is, you know, um, the contract or how we look at terms, or this is how we value our partners. Suddenly like you're, you decide to work for a company that, embraces that and then you're gonna you're gonna accept it it's harder six months or a year or two or three years later say okay now we have processes and now you have to do things a certain yep. way yep um and Super so yep. um i did that um you know for quite a few years with matchbook it, be, it really became a strategic sourcing and procurement consulting firm to hyper growth okay. companies mostly in the biotech space okay um and then they gave me first to like all the problems of procurement. Why is this happening? Why in our day-to-day -day lives we make decisions like so fast, we can buy things, we can, you know, the waste tells me how long it's gonna take me to the office and the other route I should be taking. I book a restaurant, so easy, but when I go to work and I need suppliers just to do my job, there's an enormous amount of friction. We've done a study that shows 240 plus hours of work between I have a business requirement to getting that suppliers vetted and onboarded and ready to start working with you. And that's just not acceptable like, mm. in, in, in our time. We uh, did a research just a couple of months ago with Wakefield that showed that it takes up to four days just to update a data point on a supplier and up to 21 days to validate and onboard that supplier into your system. And so when, you know, when, when things like COVID happens and you need to, to shift gears really, really fast, you know, even though you may have a lot of different technology and software, you don't have access to information that makes you, you know, adapt to market changes fast enough. And that puzzled me, like why there's so much friction. And it came to the fact that if employees don't have access to good information fast enough to make decisions, it's because the organization just doesn't have it. Because right. it, it, it lives 
everywhere, but nowhere. It lives in people's head. It lives across multiple software. Yep. And a lot of software companies have made this promise of, you know, cloud-based technology fixing the data problem. I just didn't buy into it. Like they're all competing for the same market share. It's going to continue being this fair data source. And you really need to build it from the outside as an agnostic data platform to be able to unify information and feed those systems differently. And I just became obsessed with the idea of fixing it because I could see it. I could see the solution. I just didn't know how hard it was going to be to build it, but I could see the solution. I just became, you know, it took me nine years of, of trying to kill it as much as I could. And I, I incorporated it and then I got pregnant with my third daughter and I was like, I can't do it now and wait another and then it just was in my face every time I worked with a company it was like if they had data all of this all of this like all this waste or all of these lost opportunities like would just be you know the upside would be significant in time and dollars and 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 mitigating risk and so so much value um that I just need to do it and I couldn't find it I was trying to find it for my clients and it just didn't exist. It didn't exist. The RiderFlex podcast features entrepreneurs, business executives, and the stories behind how they got there, as well as daily tips on career advice and job interviews. Our show can be heard just about anywhere these days, but you can visit RiderFlex.com and click on the podcast page to hear all the previous episodes and learn more about the recruiting and consulting services we provide. Contact us at the email address info at riderflex.com or 888-964-5876. Thanks so much for listening. And if you enjoy our show, please be sure to subscribe to our channel and like the episodes.